Hi everyone, my name is Judy from Happy Holistics and welcome to my channel. Here is a 30 minute sequence that you can do right at home. The props we're going to be using for this sequence includes a blanket, which I'm going to place around the middle of the mat. I'll also be using one block, which I'm going to sit on for now. And you're also going to need a strap. Create a loop in your strap. Secure it so that it's not going to move the same way you do up a belt on your pants. In fact, if you don't have a yoga strap, you can always use a belt. I'd go for a softer material like cotton based and avoid harder materials like leather. Or you'd always have the option to do this practice without a strap entirely. If you are using it, measure the loop against your shoulders and make sure that they are the same width. You can drop the strap close to the top of your mat off to the side and we'll begin on our backs. Let's bend the knees and place the soles of your feet onto the ground at hip distance. Set up so that the knees are pointing up at the ceiling and then allow them to drop towards each other at the midline. Have your arms up alongside of your ears, resting against the floor, and clasp opposite elbows. Stay here to slow the breath feeling the support of the earth beneath you and almost melting into the floor with every exhale. Soften any tension that could be creeping up into the arms and or the back body and see if we can make it so that the longer we spend in this shape, the more comfortable we are in it. This is an excellent opportunity to connect with the breath here. So breathe in to fill your belly to capacity and exhaling it all out. We'll see if we can maintain this long, slow breath cycle as we get into more of the vigorous parts of this practice. Let's extend the arms out to the side into a T-shape and take both feet up to the ceiling and cross the right leg over the left, kind of like in eagle legs. Then cross the right arm underneath the left to grab opposite shoulders, taking the backs of the hands together or wrapping them around so that the palms touch. On the exhale, we're taking elbows and knees towards the center to meet and drawing them away from each other on every inhale. We'll do about 10 of these crunches, making sure that you're leading from your lower belly and not pulling forward with your neck because that could lead to strain. So if you feel any tension in the neck, Make sure that you're leaning back with your head as you're rounding forward with your abs. You can interlace your fingers behind your head to ensure that that action happens. Then straighten the legs out onto the floor, extend your arms and give it a good shake. For the other side, cross the left leg over the right. Take your arms out into a T-shape, then left arm goes underneath the right in the same configuration as before. Begin abdominal crunches on the exhale and do the same amount that we did on the first side. Instead of going as fast as you can, going slow will allow the muscles to work harder and will lead to greater strength. See if you can match the pulses to that same steady breath that we established in the beginning, exhaling to curl and inhaling to lengthen. Once you've completed your crunches, legs come to the floor. Bounce the knees up and down. Hug them into your chest and rock from side to side. Bring your feet to the ground about hip width distance apart. Then bend your elbows so fingers point up at the ceiling. Keep the hips glued to the ground as you press into the elbows and puff only your chest up. Squeeze the shoulders back behind you to encourage the back bend in your upper thoracic spine. This is similar to the action we'd find in low cobra, just that we're facing the ceiling instead of the floor. With your next exhale, release the pose and drop the knees to the right then left and cycle back and forth like this. Then interlace your fingertips behind your head, draw the chin towards your chest, and it might feel good to rock the chin from side to side. Return the head back to the ground, 
Grab the backs of your thighs and rock up and down the spine a couple of times. And eventually we'll meet in seated, then transition to hands and knees. If it doesn't feel good to roll back and forth, just make your way to all fours in any way that's comfortable. If you have sensitive knees, make sure that you're doubling up on your mat or placing your knees on a folded blanket like I am. Take fists if you have sensitive wrists and stack them underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Let's concentrate on squeezing the shoulder blades back behind you and pressing into the floor to spread them wide apart. It's not traditional cat and cow, so try and keep the rest of the spine stable as you focus on broadening the collarbone without sinking your belly down and then rounding the shoulders downward to create space in the upper spine of your back body. Cycle like this a couple of times, moving at the same pace as your breath. Come back through to a neutral spine, untuck the back toes if they're tucked and take a block with you. Sink your hips back in space towards your heels and drop the head to your mat. Your arms are forward of your body in this variation with the elbows on the floor and position it so that the palms are facing each other with the block in center. Aim to feel a gentle stretch between the armpit and the elbows. You may need to move the elbows further away from your body to feel it. Then when an inhale comes, we'll begin lifting the block away from the ground and up overhead. And when you exhale, you're going to lower the block back down to the floor. Let's move between these poses a couple of cycles. Remove the block off to the side and drop your arms alongside of your body. Shift the hips from side to side to settle into this pose and know that at any time in your practice, if you need a break, you can always come to this pose. When you're ready to move on, we'll come back into our tabletop position and take a few traditional cat and cows. So begin in the way that we did earlier with an inhale to draw the shoulders back together in space and this time belly sinks with it. As you exhale, press into the ground with your hands and arc your spine to the ceiling. Breathe in to feel expansion through the front body. Breathe out to feel length in the back body. Inhaling cow pose and exhaling for cat. Let's take a couple more cycles just like this in your own time. Neutralize your spine once you've finished a full cycle, then move your left hand more towards the center of your mat and plant it underneath your face. On an inhale, sweep the right hand out to the side and up. As you exhale, take it back down along the same path, then through the space between your hand and the knee, and rest the shoulder onto your mat. Left hand can stay where it is, or it can move to touch the lower back, or you can choose to reach it up towards the sky, whatever your body feels like today. After a few breath cycles here, we'll come back to a tabletop and do the second side. So right hand goes onto the middle of your mat. Twisting from your belly, sweep your left hand up to peel the chest open to the side wall, reaching your hand towards the ceiling. Take the hand towards the floor, but continue tracking it towards the left side, allowing the shoulder to touch down, and we're twisting in the opposite way this time. Find a comfortable place for your right hand so that it can stay where it is, it can wrap around to touch the sacrum, or it can reach up to the sky. I dropped my hand towards the opposing hip. Unravel the twist when you're ready and we'll meet in a seated posture on a block. We're going to play around with external and internal rotation of the arms, then find downward dog facing arms.
Start with stop sign hands, then point the fingers away from each other, then down. Circle the fingers back up and point the fingers towards each other. Taking the fingers away from each other is external rotation. And as you move your fingers back up and in, it's internal rotation. Notice how the shoulders roll forward in internal rotation and your elbows pop up when you're externally rotated. To find downward dog arms, let's externally rotate the entire arm first. Then keeping the upper arm this way, let's turn internally from the elbow crease to the wrist. Grab your strap and take both arms into the loop we created earlier. So feed both arms into the strap loop. Make sure that the buckle is away from your face. Set it on the spot above your elbow crease on your upper arm. Find external rotation in the upper arm as you internally rotate the forearm. Then place it on the floor in front of your body. Tuck the toes under, lift your hips, and come into your downward facing dog. Pedal out the heels here by bending one knee, then the other, and alternating back and forth like this. Shift forward to stack the shoulders on top of the wrists and lower the knees to the ground. Shoulders come forward as you bend your elbows towards a 90 degree angle, and as you breathe in, push into your hands to come back into your modified plank. Exhale to our modified chaturanga, and breathe in to push up. You want to make sure that your head is in the same line as the rest of your spine so it's not dumping down every time you're bending your elbows. Here's an example of what I mean. You don't want to be dunking your head down like this. Instead, aim to keep the crown of your head pointing forward rather than down. We'll do a couple more of these yoga push-ups. And when you've had enough, tuck your toes under and come back into a downward facing dog. Then drop your knees, send your hips back to your heels and rest in child's pose, keeping your arms forward of your body because it's still in the strap. Take a couple of wrist circles here to release that. And then we'll come back into our downward facing dog. If you'd like, you can take the same variation that we took the first round being on our knees and taking our push-up poses. Or this time you can roll forward, staying on your toes and bending your elbows to about 90 degrees. Cycle between these three poses with your breath. So moving forward on the inhale, exhaling to bend, inhale to push back into plank, and then exhale back into downward dog. Knees come down, send the hips back, and belly comes to thigh, head resting against your mat. Allow the hips to shake from side to side and take wrist circles again if that feels good in your body. Walk both hands forward so that your hips stack on top of your knees. Continue allowing your chest to drop down, forehead rests against your mat for heart melting pose. Begin walking the hands back towards your body transitioning through a tabletop position and into downward facing dog. Extend the right leg up to the sky for three-legged dog. Then begin stepping it through between your hands. Take the back knee to the ground and see if you can shift your weight forward, dropping the hips down towards the earth. If this is enough sensation, stay here. Otherwise, lower both forearms and elbows to the ground. If this is where you want to stay, stay. Otherwise, tuck your back toe under and lift the knee. Avoid dropping the head down. And remember to keep the front knee hugging in towards the body so it's not splaying out to the side. Then step the front foot all the way back to meet its pair. Stay for a couple of breaths in our forearm plank to build strength through the core, remembering not to drop through the belly. When the next exhale comes, release the belly to the floor and untuck your toes. As the lower extremities rest against the floor, see if you can encourage the back bend through the upper spine, so drawing the shoulder blades back together in our Sphinx pose. Then tuck the toes under, lift the hips, 
and walk your feet in towards your face for a dolphin dog. Lift the right leg up to the sky, holding here for three-legged dolphin dog. Then release and switch sides, so left leg reaches up towards the sky. Return the top foot back towards the earth, drop your knees to the ground, and come back onto your palms. Send the hips back and up for downward dog, then reach the left leg up to the ceiling. When your exhale comes, step it through towards your hands and drop the back knee to the earth. Again, I invite you to choose your own adventure. So if you want to lower your elbows and forearms to the ground, go ahead and do so. If you'd like, you can also tuck the back toes under to pick up the back knee. You may experience differences on both sides. That's okay, you're totally normal. Step the front foot all the way back for your forearm plank and stay, taking deep inhales and exhales to guide you through this challenge. Drop the belly towards the earth for Sphinx Pose, and maybe it feels good to walk the elbows forward a little bit. And then we'll reset by taking the elbows back underneath the shoulders, tucking the back toes under, lifting the hips, and coming back into our Dolphin Dog. Lift the right leg up towards the sky on our inhale. Exhale to release the foot back down. Then take the left leg up to the sky, remembering to keep our shoulders square. Foot comes back down to the earth, release the knees to the ground, come onto palms and downward facing dog. Come high on your tippy toes, then step forward between your hands. Extend the heart forward for flat back, then fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, rise up. Inhale as you reach the top. And exhale, hands to heart center, then out to the sides. Breathe in, reach up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale to flat back. Exhale, plant your palms, step your feet back into downward dog. Inhale to come forward into plank. Exhale, bend your arms to 90 degrees. Breathe in to push back up and breathe out for downward dog. Feet come forward to your mat. Exhale to bow. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, sweep forward and up. Breathe in when you get there and then exhale, hands back to your heart. Again. Inhale, sweeping both arms up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale to come forward to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to push up and exhale back to downward dog. Inhale to load your spring and exhale to hop forward. Inhale, reach the crown forward and exhale to bow towards your thighs. Breathe in to lengthen. Exhale to rise up. Breathe in when you get to the top and exhale hands to heart center. Feet to hip distance. On your inhale, reach your arms up to the sky and sit your hips low in a chair pose. Your biceps won't come to your ears, but at least the strap will prevent your head from collapsing down. Exhale, straighten the legs, bow forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back into downward dog. Breathe in to come forward. Exhale, bend your elbows. Inhale, push back up and exhale back towards downward dog. Inhale, takes your right foot up. Exhale, step it through. Breathe in, sweep your arms up to high lunge and exhale to settle. Inhale, one more breath here. Then exhale, hands come to the floor and you can either step back into downward dog or go through a flow. We will meet in Downward Facing Dog. In your own time, left leg reaches up to the sky, and then step it through between your palms. Inhale, both hands sweep up for high lunge, and exhale to settle. Take one more breath here, then exhale, hands come down to the earth to frame your foot. Step back in flow or Downward Dog.
look forward jump or step, flat back, then bow forward. Breathe in, sweep your arms up, sink your hips low for chair pose, and exhale, returning back to a standing position. Bend the knees for chair pose, fold, halfway lift, downward dog. Plank pose, chaturanga, plank pose, downward dog. Step the right foot forward, inhale to high lunge. Hands touch down and either flow or downward dog. Left foot steps between your fingertips, rise up. Then hands touch down and flow or downward dog. From downward dog, lift your toes and we'll meet at the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale to fold. Inhale into chair pose and exhale to stand. Let's loop the strap behind us at the same height that it was originally, so right above the elbow crease. I'm just gonna turn the face this way so my bum's not in the camera in the next little sequence. With your arms slightly behind you, sink low into your chair pose. I like having the strap there because it really helps to keep the chest open. Become light on your right foot and then step it all the way back into a runner's lunge. Keep the front knee stacked on top of the front ankle. Your back heel is lifted but pressing down. Take your torso to upright. Keep a slight bend in your back knee to see if you can square off the hips and see if you can take the shoulders above the hips. Begin working both legs towards straight, staying on the toes of your back foot. Begin turning towards the long edges of your mat, mine is to the right side. Inhale to stand tall, even taking the shoulders up and back. Then exhale, hinge from the hips and bow forward. Allow your arms to drop over to the right side, then the left, and just swinging from side to side like this a couple of times. Let's come back to center, hug your belly towards your ribs, and then rise up on the inhale. Turn to face the front of your mat, back heel lifts, bend into the front knee for your lunge. Begin hinging forward at the waist leaning forward with your crown. Pour all of your weight into your front foot and without launching yourself, you're gonna come forward stacking the hips above the standing foot and the back foot might lift up and float off the floor. Keep lifting it so that it's at the same level as your heart and we're creating this giant T-shape with our body. Then when you inhale, you're gonna come back to stand. And if you're not there already, let's meet back at the front of our mats to do the other side. Fire up your thighs and sit into your chair. Firm into the right foot as you begin taking your left leg all the way back into the lunge. Pay attention to the front knee to make sure that it's above the ankle and not moving towards the center nor falling out to the side. Then lift your upper torso to perpendicular to the floor. Extend both legs towards straight, rising up to stand tall. Pivot both feet to face the left side of your mat. Let's fold forward with wide legs. Remember to shift your weight into your heels and not let it fall all the way to your toes. Again, sway from side to side. Keep twisting from the belly over to one side and then the opposite side. We'll come back through to the center, and then using your belly strength, you're gonna rise up to stand again, turning to face the front of the room. The back heel is lifted and toes are pointing straight forward. Bend into the right leg, which is in front, and the back heel is still lifting away from the ground. Feel an equal distribution of weight in your front foot as well as your back foot. Even as we shift our upper torso forward and down into the same line as our back leg. Firm into the big toe base mount of your front foot. 
and as gracefully as we can we're going to shift our hips forward coming into toppling tree and lifting the back leg away from the ground into a giant t-shape stay here and hold the pose not your breath and still maintaining that control we'll return back to a standing position at the front of our mat take your arms out of the loop and we'll grab the strap with our right hand Extend the right arm alongside of the ear, then bend at the elbow so you can touch the base of your neck. You may want to use your left hand to guide the right elbow towards the center. Extend the left arm out to a T, then internally rotate so that the thumb points down and the palm faces the back of the room, then grab the other end of the strap. Take your feet hip width distance apart at the front of your mat, that way when we step back we can just step straight back. Sit into your chair with this new arm configuration. Even though thighs are apart, pretend that there's a block in between them and you're squeezing them together so that knee keeps on top of the ankle. Right foot steps all the way back into our runner's lunge. And always remember if this arm configuration is not serving your practice, you can just let it go and take one of the previous variations. Lift your chest for our crescent lunge and settle into the pose. Work both legs towards straight, then turn over to face the right side. Bring your chest towards your thighs. And if this is too intense on your shoulders and arms, you can drop your arms down towards the floor or to some blocks. Your next in-breath takes you all the way up. Turn to face the front of your mat, back heel lifts. Bend into the front knee for a crescent lunge. Then we're bringing the belly towards the thigh, but you are using your abdominal strength to find lift in that area. With as much grace as you can muster, you're going to pour your weight into the front foot and the back foot floats away from the floor as we configure ourselves into our giant T-shape. With the next inhale, we're going to rise back up to stand. Shake up the shoulders and we'll meet at the front of our mats if we're not there already. Preparing for our last side, we're going to dangle the strap in our left hand. So bring your left arm right up alongside of your ear and bend at the elbow to touch the base of your neck. Use your right hand to guide that elbow towards the center. Then wrap your right arm under and back to grab the other end of the strap. Sit into your last chair pose of the sequence. Take a slight tuck of the pelvis so you're not overarching your back. It is fairly easy to do that when your arms are in a position like this. Step your left foot all the way back into your runner's lunge. Even though the back heel is lifted, the more we press down into it, the more energy is transferred backwards, so we're not pouring all the way into the front foot. Take your upper body to face the front of the room. Lengthen both legs towards straight. and turn to face the left side. Keep both legs relatively straight as you fold forward from the hips. If balancing is a little off today, you can release both hands to the ground or to blocks. Then inhale, suck the belly in to rise up to stand. Turn both feet to face the front of the room, back heel lifts and your hips are square. Without changing a single thing in the rest of your body, bend into a 90 degree angle with your front leg. Take your chest to a half lift so you're creating a nice long plane from your ankle all the way to the crown of your head. Then pop off your back foot to balance on the front leg in your giant T shape. It helps to glue your gaze to one unmoving spot on the floor. Then gradually make your way back to standing. Drop the strap off to the side, we will no longer be needing it, and then take a couple of shoulder rolls or shakes, whatever feels good to release any tension that might have crept up. Lift your arms up to the sky, bow forward toward your thighs. Lengthen your crown forward, step back into downward dog. 
move forward to plank and bend your elbows. Come into your back bend, either cobra or upward dog, then press back into downward facing dog. Bring your feet to your hands, take a flat back, then bow. Rise all the way to stand. Breathe in, sweep up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale into downward dog. Inhale to come forward and exhale to bend at your elbows. Inhale for your back bend and exhale downward dog. You can hop, step, or jump to the front of your mat towards your hands. Breathe in to find length and breathe out to bow. Rise all the way up. And last one. Lift your arms up to the sky. Take a forward fold. Lift to flat back, then step back into downward dog. Come forward for your plank, then bend at the elbows. Take your back bend, then press back into downward dog. Walk your hands back to your feet into a forward fold at the back of your mat. Then bend your knees so that you can slide both hands underneath your feet. You want to aim to get the toes all the way up to the wrist crease and just give your hands a nice massage. Feel free to bend the elbows out towards the sides or draw them close in towards your legs. Shift your weight more into the heels and then remove your hands from underneath your feet. Heel toe your feet away from each other about hip width distance or wider. You're sitting into your hips and your feet are pointing outwards. Keep your spine nice and long with a gentle tuck of your chin and bring your palms together to touch. Bring your fingers to your mat and tiptoe them forward so you're rounding your spine here. Then walk them back in. Take them behind you and allow your seat to come to the ground. In a comfortable seated position, right hand comes to the floor, left hand reaches up to the sky. When your exhale comes, fold over to the right side. I'm mirroring you in this pose. Make sure that you're not only focusing on lengthening the left side here. You do want to make sure not to be crunching into the right side body. And then we'll switch sides. So left hand comes to the floor, right arm comes alongside of the ear. And as you breathe out, you're going to arc over to the left side. If the right side hip keeps lifting up, make sure to root it back down. Keep an open chest here and maybe gaze towards the bicep of your top arm. Let's return back to center, uncross the legs, and extend them to straight. Take your fingertips behind you to see if you can sit nice and tall. With your feet flexed, you can begin hinging at the hips, making sure to keep a nice long spine. Bend both knees if you're feeling too intense of a stretch or if you're feeling some sensation behind the knees. If it feels good in your body, you can bring your hands forward, either to rest at the calves, ankles, or the bottom of the feet. Remember to keep the neck long and the head holding itself up rather than dropping it towards your calves and breathe into all the sensations. Return back to an upright position. Take both shoulders up to your ears and roll them back. Then rotate them in the opposite direction. So shrugging them up and bringing them forward and down. Do a couple of rounds with just lifting your shoulders then dropping them down. Let's center ourselves in the middle of our mats and shift the weight back to balance on our sits bones. You can keep your knees bent or try to extend them towards straight. Arms are out to the side and we're sitting nice and tall with our chest broad. On your next inhale, you're going to extend and hover one inch away from the ground. As you exhale, you're going to come back into your seated V shape. You want to make sure that you're not rounding the shoulders, so loop them up and back. And then allow your body to pulse between these two poses. If you'd like, you can take bent knees in this version. Again, inhaling to lengthen towards the earth and exhaling to float back up into your V. We'll do one more cycle 
and then release all the way down to the ground. Bend at the knees and take them towards your chest, rocking your body from side to side. Keeping the knees bent, take the soles of your feet to the sky and then grab the outer edge of your feet with both hands, continuing to rock from side to side in happy baby pose. Hug the knees into the chest. Then extend both legs and both arms up to the sky and give it a big huge shake. Take your feet down to the corners of your mat and allow your arms to drape alongside of your body. Stay here in corpse pose to close up your practice or if this bothers your back you can bring the soles of your feet towards the floor about hip width distance pointing the knees up to the sky and allowing them to knock towards center. Whichever option you choose I would recommend staying about 10 minutes. 